Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rent Prep for Landlords. This is episode number 312. And today we're going to be talking about the idea of if landlords get wiped out, Wall Street wins, not renters. So this is an article from Bloomberg that we're going to be covering today. Uh, I thought it was pretty good in that uh, a lot of this seems kind of like uh, landlords versus renters during this pandemic and, uh, you know, who's going to win or lose. Uh, but this article gives a pretty insightful um, uh, narrative on the fact that it's really that Wall Street is going to win in this battle uh, if landlords get wiped out. So we're going to deep dive into this article from Bloomberg. I'm going to get to that right after this. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Rent Prep for Landlords podcast. And now your host, Eric Worrell. So today's featured news story comes from Bloomberg Business Week. And as I mentioned, the title is If Landlords Get Wiped Out, Wall Street Wins, Not Renters. And this is by Prashant Kopal and Orshrat Carmel. And the article opens up uh, talking about a landlord in West Haven, Connecticut. And it says that nobody is bailing out Connecticut landlord Mary Beth Shields. More than half of the tenants in the 27 low-income apartments she owns in the city of West Haven and its vicinity aren't paying and there's nothing she can do about it. The state banned evictions until July and allowed tenants hurt by the pandemic to defer with no penalty. But Shields can't pay either. Her profit last year came to only $24,000 and she's behind on $1.2 million in mortgages. Like millions of other U.S. landlords who owe lenders more than $1 trillion combined, her fate is tied to renters now urgently focused on their own self-preservation. Now, if you're like me, you probably listened to that and thought, well, those numbers are pretty tight. Uh, she's basically making around $900 per unit per year. Uh, so she, I mean, that's crazy low, right? She's only making maybe 75 bucks. Uh, so she didn't really give herself a lot of wiggle room with these uh, uh, apartments, but you know, who knows uh, what the situation is that led to that. Now, uh, she says that my tenants think I'm rich, uh, Shield says. They have better cars than me, better nails, and better tax refunds. The next housing crisis is here, and this time it's about rentals. Across the U.S., landlords and tenants are wrangling over next month's rent, while an approaching avalanche of evictions threatens to bury them both. To avert a damaging wave of foreclosures like the one that swept the country more than a decade ago, Congress included the provision in the $2.2 trillion rescue package it approved in March that allows homeowners with government-backed mortgages to defer payments for up to a year. But Washington stopped short of offering renters comparable relief on the assumption that those in distress would likely qualify for $1,200 uh, checks for the Treasury uh, began mailing out in April, as well as beefed up unemployment benefits. So it was... Wall, or I should say uh, Washington's uh, mindset that these uh, stimulus checks are getting mailed out and this will help renters to uh, pay their rent. But in an Urban Institute survey of renters carried out from March 25th to April 10th, almost half said they had experienced material hardship in the previous month. Many U.S. states have imposed uh, moratoriums on evictions, but without a national rental market bailout, the economic pain is likely to spread as efficiently as the virus that caused it, flowing upwards to landlords and their lenders and the cities losing property tax revenue. So about half of the 43 million rental units in the country are owned by small businesses such as Shields One Woman Enterprise. Unless help comes soon, uh, both renters and property owners will slide down the socioeconomic scale together, says Emily Benfer, a visiting law professor at Columbia University. Now, I always love how they throw in where they're from. You're like, oh, law professor, Columbia University. She knows what she's talking about. But it'll have a ripple effect. Rent doesn't just go to the property owners. It pays for property taxes, mortgages, and salaries for the people who maintain buildings. So states with large populations of renters, which they say includes California, Texas, New York, and Florida, have instituted temporary bans on evictions. But 23 others among them, Wyoming, North Dakota, Arkansas, Ohio, and Georgia, have adopted few, if any, protections for renters, says Benfer, who collaborated with researchers at Princeton University to create a state-by-state -state housing policy scorecard for the pandemic. Uh, trade associations that represent landlords are lobbying Congress for $100 billion to cover some of the rent shortfall with direct payments to property owners, but they have yet to unite behind any of the various proposals floating in Congress. Lenders could be collateral damage, as particularly regional banks that often finance local property investors. At the end of 2019, there was $1.6 trillion of outstanding mortgage debt on multifamily properties in the U.S. And according to Paula Munger, Vice President of Research at the National Apartment Association, citing a federal study, uh, defaults in the last recession reached 5% and could climb to as high as 10% during uh, this much deeper downturn, she says. So many landlords operate on thin margins, typically nine cents for every dollar, according to NAA, and have nowhere to turn for help if their rental income dries up. 
but most definitely or most don't qualify for federal mortgage forbearance because only about a third have mortgages backed by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or another federal agency. The Small Business Administration is bolstering companies that keep workers employed, but many property owners don't have a payroll. So Shields, who tours the property with a lawnmower crammed in the back of her Toyota Prius, handles most everything herself and hires contractors for the rest. Rich Uncle Pennybags, the Monopoly game character. I didn't know that was his name. <laughs> Rich Uncle Pennybags. I don't know if they're making that up or I've never heard him called that, but it's saying the Monopoly character who tips his top hat with one hand and holds tight to a sack of cash in the other may be the most famous landlord in America, but the stereotype is wrong. Many landlords aren't any better off than their tenants and certainly aren't rich enough to credibly pull off a bow tie, says Jan Lee, who manages two buildings in New York's Chinatown that his family has owned for nearly a century. That character of the white landlord in the suit who has a suitcase of money, in our case, every one of us has a day job, says Jan Lee, who works as a general contractor and whose family over the years has run a laundromat and home furnishing stores from its ground floor retail space. Lee doesn't have a mortgage, but he already knows he won't be able to pay his full property taxes. And that can mean the end of his family's legacy on Mott Street. So there's no forbearance for property taxes and the city can impose late fees, penalties, and liens that he'll never be able to get out from under. I'll have a bad credit, I'll owe lots of money, and my entire family's work for three generations will be gone. In Boulder, Colorado, Janet Meyer and her husband are in their 60s, with a daughter heading to college. The townhouse they bought 24 years ago is at the center of their plans to fund retirement. Now, they may have to dip into the retirement savings to cover the mortgage. The tenants are struggling and the Meyers want to help. Two of the three men in their 20s who share a $2,500 a month rent uh, lost restaurant jobs in March. The Meyers agreed to drop the rent by $400, hoping they'll manage to keep up. Reply or we rely on the rental income to make everything work, she says. I don't want to imply that if our tenant doesn't pay rent, we're going to miss a meal, but there is a very challenging balance around what is our responsibility to the unjust class system we're in. The pandemic has magnified the inequality of the housing market, which is sparking a new era of tenant activism. In cities from New York and Los Angeles to Kansas City, Missouri, where rents have been rising year after year, activists are organizing rent strikes. Shane Riggins, 31, who has been unemployed since March, joined the Philadelphia movement. He lost his temporary job in the mailroom of a law firm. Enhanced unemployment benefits kicked in and was able to pay April and May rent, but now he's talking to other tenants about what to do next. While he's sympathetic to his landlord, who has only one rental property and a mortgage to pay, he worries about saving enough money to survive the new economic crisis. It's not like we want to stick it to this landlord who is only trying to make ends meet and pay bills, but we all lost our jobs, Riggins says. Every time I pay rent, it's taken immediately and given to a bank. Is that really, in this crisis, the best use of money? Renters were cash strapped before COVID-19, and it won't take much to push many of them over the edge, says Barry Zigas, a senior fellow at the Consumer Federation uh, of America. Tenants who pay what they can are indirectly helping themselves. They'll help keep their homes out of the foreclosure pipeline and give the landlord money to keep up with repairs, he says. Small investors own much of the naturally occurring affordable housing in the U.S. If they're forced to sell or abandon properties, most of the market might wind up in the hands of Wall Street firms, some of which who have built up large portfolios of rental properties over the last decade or so. New owners with deeper pockets might opt to reposition low-income units to target wealthier occupants. So landlords are not a popular class of business people for valid reasons and not, Ziga says. But that obscures what the uh, what's now the very symbiotic relationship of renters and owners. Shields Mortgage uh, lenders have allowed her to postpone payments, which she fears may only be delaying the inevitable foreclosure on her loans. For her or other lenders, it may also mean evicting tenants who didn't pay as soon as the moratorium is lifted. Renters are less likely to have enough savings to make up for months of lost income, and they also lack the incentive of homeowners to try to keep up. They won't catch up, Shield says of her tenants. We're never going to recover from this. So a uh, pretty gloomy article, like a lot of things right now. But uh, what it's highlighting, which I thought was interesting, is uh, it's talking about the the last crash and how a lot of Wall Street gobbled up a lot of cheap uh, uh, rental uh, properties and uh, just uh, real estate in general. And that if the small time landlord, who is a high percentage of low income properties, uh, ends up not being able to afford uh, their mortgages, they're going to default. And the people that are going to swoop in and potentially uh, scoop this up is going to be Wall Street backed um, uh, firms. 
And the interesting part on that too is the idea that they said that these types of um, investors tend to flip properties and make them for higher end. So if you're looking at things such as gentrification and the worry that you know uh, people with uh, lower income won't have anywhere to go uh, because there's less affordable housing, uh, this article is painting a picture that that may actually be increased and accelerated as Wall Street gobbles up more uh, property at a uh, affordable price for them. So uh, just another kind of wrinkle in the pandemic and how it's affecting real estate is the idea that uh, you could see Wall Street gobbling up a lot of properties in the coming future as uh, you have landlords uh, such as um, Mary Beth Shields here in Connecticut that may not be able to afford uh, her rent. So just a lot of stuff to kind of think about. And it's pretty interesting uh, to see what the, uh, when we look back in five, 10 years at this, to see what the impact is and how some of the bigger players come in and swoop in a, a good deal uh, at the expense of not only renters, but landlords as well. So I thought this was interesting. I'm going to link to the full article if you guys want to check it out from Bloomberg. Uh, thank you for the authors for uh, creating this content. And uh, I'll have that in the show description. And I hope you guys are doing well. I know that, you know, each week is uh, challenging and we're all kind of trying to fit, you know, a little bit too much in each day, uh, especially if, you know, you're doing childcare from home or, you know, both you and your partner working from home. Uh, I know it can be tough, but, uh, you know, just try to enjoy it and uh, really, you know, look at the, uh, the bright side of things and uh, do your best and keep your head up and uh, we'll get through this. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you guys on next week's podcast. All right, guys, have a great week and take care. Oh, 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 oh,